The first great aspect of living in central London are the views you can get of this magnificent city. We are lucky enough to have a private roof terrace that we can come up to at any time and get a whiff of London. Here we can see the beautiful cityscape of London. We can see St Paul's Cathedral and London Eye on one side, and on the other we get the side of the west view, such as the BT Tower and beyond. There is never anywhere that can match the city centre of any city. And being surrounded by such amazing buildings makes you realise how small you really are and how insignificant you are in the grand scheme of things. The main reason someone would want to move to the city is the location, and being in the centre of London does not disappoint. Just a few metres from where we live, we have the Barbican Estate. This is a residential complex made of over 2,000 flats and built after the Second World War to house middle to upper class. It's an architectural masterpiece and it is either loved or hate because of its unique brutalist design. But one thing you can't deny about it is its massive presence. If you continue to walk down, there is a Museum of London, which I may have visited as a kid, but not as an adult, and I do intend to after lockdown ends. Following this bend of the road, you can come to approach St Bart's Hospital, which was founded in 1123 and is one of the oldest hospitals in Britain and has a breathtaking architecture, something that is shared with the entire region of this actual area. Walking along this path, you are greeted by the jaw-dropping sight of St Paul's Cathedral. The cathedral is one of the most famous and most recognisable buildings in London. It was also the tallest building in London from 1710 to 1963. Its massive dome still remains one of the highest in the world. If you ever visit London, you cannot leave without visiting this site as it is guaranteed to awe you when you stand in front of it and its amazing grand structure. Following the path from St Paul's Cathedral, you can walk down a nice downward path where skateboarders love to hang as its decline is nice and long and perfect for skating tricks. But it also presents a nice pathway to the Millennium Bridge, which was first opened up in the year 2000, aptly named the Millennium Bridge, but had to be closed because of numerous reports that it was wobbly. This bridge is also featured in one of the later Harry Potter movies, where it is destroyed by Death Eaters. The bridge is truly spectacular to walk across. It presents an amazing view of London. Onto your right you get a glimpse of the Tower Bridge, which is arguably the most iconic bridge of London and the bridge that can open up to let large ships go under. On the left you can see Blackfriars Bridge. I so recommend walking this bridge after sunset as the lights here are amazing. At the end of the bridge you can see Tate Modern, a world renowned art gallery which was built in an old factory slash warehouse building with a ginormous chimney that can be seen from miles away. Once you cross the bridge, I recommend that you glance back to see St Paul's Cathedral. The bridge was expertly centred so that the dome of St Paul's Cathedral is in the middle of the central gap of the bridge. Once you hop off the previously wobbly bridge, you can get to the south bank side of London, and this is one of the greatest walks of your life. <laughs> Here, you get to walk along London's great banks of the Thames with amazing river views of the city and chances to experience red double-decker buses crossing the many bridges. There is just so much to see and do, of course, after lockdown finishes, but following this path, you can reach the National Theatre and many other amazing arts and performance venues, such as the Royal Festival Hall, which coincidentally was where my graduations were. Following this, you can walk over to Waterloo Bridge that can take you to Trafalgar Square, or if you keep walking, you can get to the London Eye and eventually the Houses of Parliament, which is home to the hugely famous Big Ben. Fun fact, the tower itself is not called Big Ben, which is called the Elizabeth Tower. The bell inside the tower, which rings every hour, is named Big Ben, after a man called Ben who was very big and tall. 
As you can imagine, the running routes you can have from living in Central are fantastic, especially if you can avoid using public transport during the pandemic. A five kilometer running route will get you through the most spectacular views in London, motivating you to keep running and also making it feel like nothing as you get carried away by the awe-inspiring architecture. I hope you found this video interesting and it gave you a bit of an insight of how it's like to live in central London. If you liked it, please like and comment down below and also subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Javert and I'm a PhD student living at University of Logis Karabrojan. Thank you for coming to the